Hey what is up guys? We know that Bitcoin has been the best performing asset for the past decade. Even though it is very volatile, but the question still remains, how do we value this damn thing? In this video, we will take a look at the current state of Bitcoin market and we will address the question how to value a Bitcoin. Let's take a quick look of the Bitcoin current price. Yes, it dropped below $8,000. Since October 11th, we have seen dump after dump after dump after dump after dump. Since then, Bitcoin dropped from $8,800 to the current price of about $7,900. We basically lost nearly $900 within one week. If you want to convert that into percentage, that would be roughly 10% decline. Some people are going into panic. They start doubting and selling Bitcoin. Especially I can relate this to someone who has a large crypto followers on YouTube. I'm talking about altcoin daily. He released on Thursday a video titled I'm thinking of selling it. I am a big fan of his work. I watched his video almost every day, but I strongly disagree what he had to say in that video. Let's take a quick look what his concerns was about Bitcoin and why he was thinking about selling it. The problem is this. When I talk to no coiners about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, I get a surprising amount of apathy. Most people, when I talk to them, they just don't seem that interested in getting off zero when it comes to Bitcoin. And that surprises me because I, I tell them, I explain to them why Bitcoin isn't a bubble. I, I talk about how it's scarce, permissionless. I, I talk to them about why Bitcoin has value, the fundamentals, the network effect, the on-ramps. I tell them this stuff has never been better. It's never been greater. And you know what? They just don't seem that interested. They just don't seem like they have a sense of urgency to get off zero. So it looks like the main concern was that his friends and no coiners it's actually a cool term, never heard of no coiners. So they just don't want to be interested in Bitcoin and they do not have the sense of urgency to jump in into the market. Just think about it, why would they be interested in Bitcoin? Let's look at the middle class people's mindset. The current state of economy is just great. Stock market is about to reach new all time high. They have 9 to 5 jobs with a decent salaries they live paycheck to paycheck, they spend money on partying and expensive clothes to impress other people they do not even like. They buy stupid lottery tickets and hoping of getting rich quick, which we know that probability of winning a lottery is lower than dying in an aeroplane crash. And then there is this very volatile Bitcoin that brings no value for them whatsoever, especially that is trending down currently. What middle class person would like to invest in that thing? Probably nobody. But in late 2017, if you would tell them the great features of Bitcoin, they piled in when Bitcoin reached $20,000, then it dropped to $6,000 and even lower, they got hurt, they left the space. And that's pretty much the end of the story. It takes courage and beliefs to go against the crowd to buy when everyone absolutely hates it and to sell at euphoric state when they believe they get it rich quick. To be a long term investor, it's not hard to understand the concept, but it is very and very difficult to implement it. And most people cannot do that. Not even all money managers can implement that concept. And why is that? Because they have a short term horizon. They get influenced by daily price fluctuation and daily news. But the reality is, it's all just random noise that distracts you from having a long-term vision. Do you think Jeff Bezos thinks about how much money Amazon will make tomorrow or next week? Or do you think that he cares where Amazon stock will be tomorrow or next week? It's really central to the way we think about all of our business uh, problems and a, and a bunch of things at Amazon is we're long-term oriented. So I uh, ask everybody to not think in two to three year time frames, but to think in five to seven year time frames, to not think about, when somebody says to me, congratulates Amazon on a good quarter, um, which is a very common thing to say. You meet somebody, they're being nice. They looked at your financial results for the quarter, they're like, good quarter. I say, thank you. But what I'm thinking to myself is, 
that quarter, all that, those quarterly results were actually pretty much fully baked about three years ago. And so like today, I'm working on you know, uh, a quarter that is gonna happen in 2020, not next quarter. Next quarter, uh, for all practical purposes, is done already, and it's probably been done for a couple of years. Um, and so if you start to think that way, um, it changes how you spend your time, how you plan, um, where you put your energy, um, and, and your ability to look around corners gets better. So many things improve if you can take a long term. And by the way, it's not natural for humans. So it's a, it's a discipline that you have to build. The, um, the kind of, you know, uh, get rich slowly schemes are not big sellers on uh, infomercials. You know, it's, uh, and so that's something that you have to sort of steal yourself for and discipline and teach. Um, uh, over time. So the, that's, what is Amazon? I would say really it's a collection of principles and, appro and it's an approach that we deploy um, and, uh, uh, and it's fun. I dance into work. Well, he doesn't give a damn where Amazon going to be next week because he has a long-term vision. Honestly, I do not really care where Bitcoin is going to be tomorrow or next week. What will it change? If Bitcoin is going to be at $6,000, my mindset and approach will not change at all. Just like if Bitcoin is going to be at $10,000. What's up guys, I just want to give a quick shout out to Alipal, they sent me the new hardware wallet. It's, I believe it's called Alipal Titan. That's what they have inside. It's a pretty cool wallet. Um, let me just open it. I already installed the app and backed it up. That's my Bitcoin wallet. Feel free to send me some Bitcoins. They have a number of different cryptocurrencies. And what else we have here? If we open the box, we have micro USB, we have some Alipal stickers, and that's the charger. It actually has battery in it, so you will have to charge it just like you charge your iPhone. And my favorite part is titanium backup plate. It's actually, you can store your 2412 backup seats on this titanium plate. I really, I'm not going to open it because I have my titanium backup phrase in it, but that's essentially what it looks like. If you guys are interested, I would highly recommend this. It costs about 50 bucks and titanium Titan Elipal wallet is about uh, $170. I believe made of, made of titanium. So if you guys are interested, I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. What is the value of Bitcoin? Bitcoin is not easy to value. Unlike equities market, it is fairly simple to value stocks. We simply find the growth rate of the cash flow, then discounted future cash flow back to the current date, and therefore we can get an intrinsic value of the stock. But how do we value Bitcoin? Let's take a look what Charlie Lee has to say about valuing a Bitcoin. That's a tough question to answer, um, but let me just sort of start with how we traditionally look at at traditional equities, there's several ways to look at equities. One is uh, compare equities to an underlying fundamental valuation. So for a company that's obviously using a discounted cash flow model with a terminal value, or even, even thinking about public comparables, you know, if it's a takeout. When we look at a, a market broadly for equities, um, that is extended to looking at the market value of the enterprise relative to its market size. So for the stock market, the best metric is equity to GDP. And the third way is, is obviously to, is to use a um, relative valuation approach, which is to value equities either against uh, a risk-free rate plus premium or against equities versus credit. And that's, I think, a lot more common these days for, for folks to look at equities relative to credit. Now, to apply this to crypto, it's, it's obviously a little more challenging for a couple of reasons. One is blockchain itself is structured differently than other traditional technology protocols. One of the features of it is that blockchain, because of the proof of work that's embedded within Bitcoin and currently within most of the other tokens, there's a payment made to those who are doing proof of work, which makes the protocol layer or what you call like, you know, the blockchain network itself generating internal cash flow. So it's different than looking at a technology where applications are laid on top of that.
But the simplest way we think to value uh, these cryptocurrencies as a consequence is to think of this platform as an alternative medium. And I think one of the simple ways is to just look at it as an alternative digital currency or an alternative currency and a share of that market relative to the total currency market. A couple of approaches make some sense for Bitcoin. One is, is the idea that uh, a transaction platform, which you know Bitcoin um, and these other blockchain technologies are trying to become pl uh, transaction platforms, means that the value of the network should grow with the number of users. Um, and there's, a, there's an established sort of thesis that George Gilder started, which he, which he says that the value of the network is equal to the square of the number of users. And a professor at MIT, Metcalf, actually essentially proved this out. So one way to value a, a network like Bitcoin is to look at the number of unique addresses and that the transactions executed by each address and if you use a log function for that, that has explained 94% of Bitcoin's move since 2013. Now, longer term, we think it makes more sense to look at this as a store of value concept. And in our approach, we look at Bitcoin capturing 5% of alternative currencies, which is today dominated by gold. And in five years, if Bitcoin captures 5% of that share of alternative currencies, each unit of Bitcoin is going to be worth roughly $25,000. 5% of alternative currencies seems like a fair evaluation, which it would put Bitcoin at $25,000 a coin. It seems pretty realistic. Let's see how else we can value a Bitcoin. When I started in the industry, it was a, as a buy-side equity analyst. And uh, to value different companies um, requires looking each year at what the revenue, the projected revenue for that company will be what the different margins will be for that company, and then valuing largely that company based on a multiple of, say, sales or on a multiple of earnings. I was uh, working in the high growth technology space, so we were mostly looking at price to sales ratios. And then, of course, there's more robust models um, if you're going to go through and do a full dividend discount model or something like that. Um, but the key learnings from that process and the way in which I translated it into value in crypto assets is to set up each year what um, the different flows of money or flows of value are going to look like for a crypto asset and therefore the value necessary um, or the necessary stored value by that crypto asset in order to facilitate those money flows. So to make that more concrete, um, we can dive a bit into the methodology. Um, each year you can set up, so 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and into, well into the 2020s, you can set up these models um, using the equation of exchange. So the equation of exchange being MV equals PQ, where M is the monetary base, um, v is the velocity of that asset, um, which equals uh, PQ. PQ, traditionally in monetarism, is the GDP of a company, where P represents the average price of a basket of goods, and Q, the quantity of the basket of goods. And so that basic idea is, if a monetary base turns over at a certain velocity, that monetary base is used to sustain an economy of size PQ. And the way that translates to crypto assets is each one of these protocols, each one of these networks, is largely a single good or couple of good economy um, of size PQ that has a native asset, a native unit of account um, that is facilitating that economy. And so to solve for the value that any crypto asset must store requires us to set up that equation to solve for the monetary base M. Bitcoin is actually one of the harder crypto assets to value. And um, to explain why requires us to dig a little bit into the taxonomy of crypto assets and why I use the term crypto assets. So I think of crypto assets as having three verticals. So you have cryptocurrencies, crypto commodities, and crypto tokens. A cryptocurrency um, serves as a global medium of exchange, store of value, and unit of account. And Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, right? So it falls in that vertical, as does Monero or Zcash or Litecoin and, and, and those assets. It is, um, you know, particularly hard to 
value a uh, cryptocurrency. And, so, and some people, like Professor Damon Duran, would claim that you can't value a currency. You can only price it. Any outlook on uh, the future price of Bitcoin really needs to take into account the supply side and the demand side. And the supply side is very predictable for Bitcoin, right? So we know um, with Bitcoin right now, its um, annual rate of supply inflation is roughly 4%. Um, and that got cut in, ha in half in the summer of last year. And we know in the summer of 2020, that rate of supply inflation is going to get cut in half again to 2%. So we have this predictable rate of supply inflation going forward for the next three years. Now, um, if the demand of Bitcoin is increasing, right, at more than 4%, say, annually, um, while the velocity of Bitcoin is staying constant, um, then that would imply that the price needs to rise in order to meet that demand, right? Because there's simply um, at the margin of the bid and the ask of demand based on supply available, um, Bitcoin would have to rise in value in order to meet that demand at the given supply cadence. So any investigation that I'm going to do on the future price of Bitcoin takes into account, okay, what do I think the demand drivers are, be, are going to be? Um, why, you know, what are the probabilities around those, um, those demand drivers, and then mashing that up against the supply. In commodity world, supply and demand seems to be the main driver of the price. If demand exceeds supply, price will rise. If the opposite happens, price will fall. And we know that Bitcoin supply is fixed, and the current rate is about 4% annually. After its once it's once a having, Bitcoin supply will drop to 2%. After its once it's once a having, it will drop to 1%, and so on and on. If demand would stay the same, or even slightly increase, we would get asymmetric rate of returns. Stock to flow model seems to be a pretty accurate approach to value Bitcoin's price, at least at the current time. The formula is pretty simple. We take the entire Bitcoin supply, which is 18 million coins, and divide that number by annual flow, which is 0.7 millions. That would be a stock to flow ratio of 26. After each having, stock to flow ratio would grow exponentially. The higher the rate, the higher the price. Plan B believes that after 2020 having, Bitcoin will be between 50 and 100 thousand dollars a coin. I made entire video about stock to flow model. I would highly recommend watching that video if you haven't yet. You can find that video in the description box below. Let me know what you guys think about the best way to value a Bitcoin. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, hit that like button and subscribe.